Oi, fala aí pessoal, bom dia. Você está escutando o inglês do inglês do inglês do rádio. I am your host, Foster Hodge. This is your daily dose of English. Hello, hello, hey, what's up guys, it's Foster from English to Crew. Right now, for the first part of the episode, it is just going to be me, Alexia, is currently washing dishes and playing with dogs. You will probably hear her laughing or some barking in the background at some point. So, yesterday, we talked about the schwa sound, this classic, very relaxed, uh, uh, this super lazy, uh, sound that we see all of the time in English. And we mentioned that the schwa has a lot to do with stress. So today, that's what we're talking about. Stress. I'm stressed out. I have too much work. I know that you guys are stressed out. So we're going to try to simplify things and make it a little easier for everyone so we can have a less stressful life, and at least a less stressful weekend. So let's get straight to it. So English is a stressed time language. I know this sounds complicated. This episode will be full of complicated terms that will all make sense in the end, I promise. So a stressed time language basically means that we stress the most important sounds and syllables in a word or a phrase. So in some languages, in syllable time languages, every syllable is the same length. In English, it sounds really, really weird if each syllable is the exact same length. It's really important to have some contrast, to have some longer syllables, some shorter syllables, to speak louder sometimes, to speak softer sometimes. So my recommendation here, as always, is do not think about words. Think about the sounds and the phrases. So this is something that I see all the time with my students. This obsession with pronouncing each word completely and clearly. But if you think about it, so for example, if you say, how are you doing today? And you're saying each syllable separately and each syllable as a clear thought. That sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a robot. Although technically you are pronouncing each word correctly, it just sounds super weird, super unnatural to native speakers. Instead, most native speakers would say, how are you doing today? You know? The intonation goes up and down. I'm saying, how are you doing today? And I say some words louder. I reduce some sounds. And all of these things happen naturally. So in general, we put more stress on what we call content words. So this is another linguistic thing. But you can think of content words as the most important words in a sentence or in a phrase. So in general, content words are nouns and verbs, you know, normally the most important things. And naturally, we reduce the stress of the other less important words like pronouns, articles, prepositions, etc. So for example, let's take the phrase, I'm going to study a lot of English today, right? So all of the unstressed syllables naturally take this schwa sound. I'm gonna study a lot of English today. I'm saying I'm gonna study a lot of English today. I'm gonna study a lot of English today. So the unstressed syllables take this kind of uh, uh, reduced sound. And then the more important words like English, today, study, those things we say a little bit louder, a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna study a lot. How much English are you going to study? A lot of English. I'm going to study a lot of English. So you see how my voice is going up and down. And again, I know this sounds super complicated, 
but I promise most things in stress will happen naturally. And the good news is, you probably do this all the time in Portuguese. There's actually a good bit of debate among the linguistic community if Brazilian Portuguese is a stress time language or a syllable time language. So a lot of people say that European Portuguese is more stress timed and Brazilian Portuguese is a little bit more syllable time. But honestly, Brazilian Portuguese is so diverse and I think most variations tend to be more stress time. So you don't need to worry about it that much. So let's bring in the expert, the one and only Alexia into the conversation to do some real life examples, some real life practice. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I love you. Hey, Alexia. Hey, Foster. Think about all of the cool stuff you could do in 15 minutes. Uh-huh. In 15 minutes, you could run two miles. No. In 30 minutes, <laughs> you could walk very fast. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Or you could take a free class with Cambly. That's true. Yeah. Tell us about Cambly. <laughs> Cambly é uma plataforma online de inglês. Sim, vocês já sabem isso, vocês têm escutado isso todos os dias e eu não sei por que você ainda não foi ter sua aula de graça com o Cambly. Cambly Inglês e Nicru se juntaram e estão te dando uma aula de graça de inglês. Você vai lá no site cambly.com ou no aplicativo Cambly, no Android, no iOS, qualquer tipo de telefone que você tenha, se inscreva e coloque o cupom Inglês no Icru. E desse jeito você vai ter uma aula de graça. Eu já estou recebendo feedback de pessoas que já fizeram, estão amando e disseram que vão continuar. Então é assim, qualquer nativo de qualquer região, com qualquer sotaque, sobre qualquer especialidade, sobre qualquer coisa que você Alexia, queira Alexia, falar. There are a lot of cats coming our way. Gente, são bebês! Oi! Oh meu Deus! Ok, Cambly.com. We are getting attacked by cats. On with the show. Now, back to our show. Alright guys, now we are here with Alexia. Welcome, Alexia. Everyone missed you. Hey. What's up? What's up? <laughs> How are you feeling today? Are you feeling perhaps a little stressed? A little bit. Yeah. Maybe perhaps because we're taking care of 10 dogs. <laughs> and waking up at 7 every day and having to deal with the electricity at the house. It's not that fun. It's not that fun. It is not that fun. So, Alexia... We are talking about stress. More or less, it's a simple concept that in English, sometimes we put more emphasis, more stress on some words. So we say them louder. We say them with more authority. And then on other words, we kind of, we tend to reduce them and say them softer or we kind of just make the uh, the schwa sound. And depends on the way that you say it, right? As well. Yes, yes, it depends on the way you say it. And that is actually has more to do with intonation, which we will talk about in the next episode. Alexia, always one step ahead of me. <laughs> so let's do some examples. So, for example, Alexia, what are we going to do today? Work. We are going to work, of course. Perfect. We are going to work. Of course. <laughs> okay, so let's try to break this phrase down into syllables and see which syllables are stressed and which are not stressed. So we are going to work, right? So we have we. Next syllable. Are. Perfect. Go. Ink. To. Work. Perfect. Now listen to the way I say it. We are going to work. Mm-hmm. Do you hear how my voice is going up and down? So in this phrase, I'm saying, we are going to work. So in general, we always stress the content words, which normally are verbs and nouns. So in this case, I really want to demonstrate that it's us, it's we, and we are going, going 
And what are we going to do? We're going to work, right? Right. Okay. So let's try another one.、Um, we are really excited about our new sound school course. Okay. Try to say that phrase for me. We are very excited about our new sound school course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try it one more time, a little bit more naturally. And Is that the phrase? Yeah, more or less. It doesn't matter the phrase. Just give me a similar phrase, and then we will analyze it. We are very excited about our new cars. Perfect. You see how Alexia is saying we are very excited about our new course. She is not saying we are very excited about our new. No,、course. it's not like a robot. Exactly. In my opinion, I think. That most people do this in Portuguese as well. There's a lot of debate among linguists that European Portuguese is actually a stress time language, just like English, but Brazilian Portuguese is more of a syllable time language. But a lot of people argue that、ah, there's still a lot of debate there. So give me a simple phrase in Portuguese. Eu adoro ir à praia. É, eu adoro ir. A praia, né?、Uhum. Foi isso. Eu adoro ir à praia. Eu adoro ir à praia. É, para mim é a mesma coisa. Você está falando eu adoro ir à praia. So same thing that the words are going up and down. You really want to stress the fact that você adora. Eu adoro. So we're stressing things. You do the same thing in Portuguese. So don't let stress in English stress you out too much. I know it's complicated, but it's not impossible. It just requires some time and patience. It's really one of those things that you learn organically over time. The more you do it, it's the kind of thing that we break down very simply for you in sound school, with different dialogues, with poetry, with music. It's awesome. Tomorrow we'll talk about intonation. Any last words, Alexia? No, just act naturally. Just act naturally. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I agree.、Um, I think another way of saying that is don't think about individual words. Just speak. Yeah, even though it's wrong, just speak. Yeah, that's a great place to end. Just speak. 